Welcome to Module 2.6 of the AAGL online training. This module covers the manual wheelchair benefits provided by Alberta Aids to Daily Living. In this video, we will look at an overview of the benefits and review the wheelchairs and options on the manual wheelchair approved product list. We will discuss manual wheelchair assessment, eligibility, and the authorization process. And we will review repairs, maintenance, replacing, and returning equipment, as well as authorizer and vendor qualifications. Let's begin with the overview of manual wheelchair benefits. Alberta Aids to Daily Living, or AADL, provides funding for wheelchairs using a recycle method. The recycle pool of AADL-owned wheelchairs is accessed first before AADL purchases new. Recycled wheelchairs are always cleaned and or refurbished before the next client uses it. The recycle program has been deemed a cost-effective approach for both the government and for AADL clients. Recycled wheelchairs cost less for an AADL client as any upgrades were already paid for by the previous client and refurbishing is less costly than cost sharing on a new purchase. An important aspect of the AADL program is that it is cost share for most clients. Clients who are low income may be exempt from sharing in the cost of their benefits. Cost share clients pay 25% of the costs of any AADL benefits up to a maximum of $500 per family per year. The cost share maximum is for all benefits a client receives, including wheelchairs. Please review Module 1 online if you need a refresher on general cost share policies. Clients who are cost share exempt do not pay the cost share amount on a wheelchair. However, all clients, both cost share and cost share exempt, must pay for any wheelchair upgrade costs over and above the cost share amount. An upgrade cost is any cost not covered by AADL. Here are two examples. The first example is of a wheelchair with standard options and no upgrades, which costs $2,300. The cost share client pays 25% or the maximum $500 towards the wheelchair and the cost share exempt clients does not pay anything. The second example is a wheelchair that costs $2,000 with an added upgrade of $200. In this case, the cost share client pays 25% cost share or $500 plus the cost of the upgrade or $200 for a total of $700. The cost share exempt client pays the upgrade only of $200. There will be more examples later in the module to assist you in determining client costs. Manual wheelchairs are divided into categories. There are three categories for pediatric clients, A, B, or tilt and space. And for adults, there are seven categories, A, including tilt and space with back and headrest, B, C, Grant Upgrade, Recycle, Category A High Weight Heavy Duty, and Category A Tilt and Space Base Only. These categories will be explained in more detail further on in this module. Wheelchairs are also described in terms of ownership and the amount of funding provided to the client. Standard and Standard Plus wheelchairs are owned by AADL, while Upgrade wheelchairs are owned by the client. Standard wheelchairs include any wheelchair benefit with costs fully funded by AADL, subject to cost share, for eligible clients. There is no upgrade on Standard wheelchairs. Standard Plus wheelchairs are wheelchairs that have upgrade charges. The wheelchair is owned by AADL when AADL has paid for more than 51% of the cost of the wheelchair. 
upgrade wheelchairs are considered owned by clients. The client has paid at least 51% of the cost of the wheelchair or has obtained an upgrade wheelchair through an AADL upgrade grant. Upgrade grants are set amounts towards a wheelchair and are automatically considered client-owned. These upgrade wheelchairs are also subject to cost share for cost share clients. AADL has contracts with wheelchair vendors to provide wheelchair maintenance and repair services and new purchases. AADL has a contract with recycle vendors to provide recycle services, including recycling equipment in and out. AADL is responsible for the cost to maintain, repair, and refurbish AADL-owned recycled wheelchairs until it is no longer cost-effective to do so. Clients are responsible for repair and maintenance costs if they are considered the owners. Once a client no longer needs their AADL-owned wheelchair, it must be returned to the AADL recycle vendor, even if it is considered beyond repair and in poor condition. Any government asset has to go through a surplus process, and this is handled through our recycle vendors. All AADL clients are responsible for the care of their wheelchairs. It is expected that clients will look after regular maintenance and take the wheelchair in to a wheelchair vendor for repairs as needed. They should also get the wheelchair added to their home insurance policy, as AADL does not replace lost, damaged, or stolen equipment. The client may have to pay the depreciated cost of the equipment if it is not insured. This list details some of the more common items not covered by AADL funding, including jerry chairs and strollers. Wheelchairs are meant to mobilize clients rather than be used as a stationary seating device. AADL does not pay for repair on privately owned wheelchairs or any privately purchased component on the wheelchair, such as an elevating seat. Clients requesting an elevating seat should be advised upfront to obtain private funding. In addition, not all options on the wheelchairs are covered. Some options may require the client to pay privately, including high performance tires or wheels, tire pumps, cosmetic accessories, and multiple color options. Note that colors other than black or blue are not permitted on the recycle wheelchairs. This is to avoid unnecessary parts replacements due to color matching. For the full list, please refer to the Manual Wheelchair Policy and Procedures Manual found on the AADL and Alberta Blue Cross websites. The AADL Program Manual, which can be found using the link on this slide, is divided into several sections. Wheelchairs are considered recyclable benefits. Note that the manual and power wheelchairs each have their own policy and procedures manual. However, they are combined onto one approved product list. Manual ZN and ZR covers information on recycle services. ZN focuses on procedures for vendors of new purchase and repair, and ZR is for the recycle vendors. Here is an example of one page of the approved product list for wheelchairs. Note there is a catalog number for each wheelchair on the AADL program. Here you will find all the wheelchair models that are funded through AADL, listed according to category. A general description of the wheelchair can be found in this list, as well as information on eligibility, equipment standards, and costs. Now let's look at the client assessment process and eligibility for manual wheelchairs. The authorization process has four major components leading up to the provision of a wheelchair to an AADL client. This slide shows the sequence of events from assessment to equipment provision. In brief, the authorizer assesses the client for their mobility needs and submits an authorization for a wheelchair on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. A wheelchair is then ordered from the selected vendor and the vendor collects cost share from the client, if applicable. The vendor then provides the wheelchair to the client and submits a claim. 
Let's begin with a more in-depth look at each of these components, beginning with the assessment process. In an assessment, the first steps are to confirm general eligibility and complete a comprehensive seating assessment. Is the client eligible for funding from WCB, NIHB, or other funding bodies? If they are, the client may not be eligible for AADL funding. Results of the comprehensive seating assessment will inform your decision regarding the type of wheelchair the client is eligible for. The rationale used to authorize some of the options for your client must be consistent with your comprehensive seating assessment. The documented comprehensive assessment must be kept on the client's record. AADL may request a copy of this assessment for audit purposes. All clinical decisions are the responsibility of the therapist. Therapists must be able to provide justification for all equipment choices and should contact their college and professional practice leads for questions about best practice. Additional measurements are required when choosing the wheelchair type, model, and size. Measurements are used to provide trial wheelchairs for assessment purposes. This slide provides just a few examples of some of the common functional considerations. Examples listed here are not exhaustive and it is expected that you have taken additional courses and training to become familiar with the different functional considerations when providing a wheelchair to a client. The functional considerations include the ability of the client to operate a wheelchair. The results of assessing this function will determine if the client is independent, dependent, or perhaps both. Assessing the client's ability to transfer will inform decisions related to break extensions, footrest, and armrest styles. If you are working with a child that requires a communication device and depending on the complexity of their needs, you may want to consult with a Level 3 SGCD service centre. These are listed on the AADL website. If the child requires a speech generating communication device, you will need to ensure the wheelchair chosen can accommodate the hardware required to mount the device. Another few considerations are the ability to arm and or foot propel. This is taken into account when determining options such as one arm drive, seat to floor heights, and footrest clearances. These functions are assessed using trial wheelchairs and are important to keep in mind when determining the various options and features on wheelchairs. Again, this information is not intended as clinical guidelines, but rather items to consider as you are completing a seating assessment for the purpose of providing a wheelchair. As mentioned previously, additional measurements are required when choosing the wheelchair type, model, and size. Measurements are used to provide trial wheelchairs for assessment purposes. Other measurements include environmental measurements to ensure accessibility. The client must be able to access the environment with their wheelchair. Measurements of the doorways are critical, especially if the client is a full-time user. The wheelchair cushion should be considered during the assessment. The height of the cushion can influence the seat to floor height, the need for a dump in the seat, and a footrest clearance to name a few considerations. AADL does not replace equipment due to errors made during the assessment. Errors of this type can have a significant negative impact on a client and may be reported to the college. This slide is an overview of eligibility across the various categories of wheelchairs. Once you have completed the comprehensive seating assessment, you will be able to determine which category a client is eligible for. Category A is for part-time users who may or may not self-propel. Clients who are eligible for Category A may not refuse a substitute. If there is a clinical need that may not be met by all wheelchairs, it is advisable to add this information on the eligibility summary form. For example, you might say, 
critical to be able to adjust the axle position posteriorly on the clinical information section of the AADL Eligibility Summary for Wheelchair Benefits form. Category B wheelchairs are for full-time users that may require more adjustability than Category A. Pediatric clients with a speech-generating communication device that need to be mounted on the wheelchair can be authorized a Category B wheelchair. Clients who are full-time users and are frequently and independently propelling themselves out in the community are eligible for Category C or D. Category D are for those who are willing to take on the costs of repairs for a Category C level wheelchair. They must be eligible for a Category C to obtain this grant. Those who want a Category C wheelchair and are not eligible for Category C must apply for a Category A or B upgrade grant depending on their eligibility. This slide is an overview of eligibility for the Upgrade Wheelchair Grants Category A, B, and D across the various categories of wheelchair. To be eligible for a Category A grant, the client must meet Category A requirements and want to upgrade to a Category B or C wheelchair. The grant is $2,000 and the client is responsible for any costs above this amount. This provides clients who may want the ultralight wheelchairs for personal preference access to some funding towards the higher category wheelchair. Similarly, clients who meet the eligibility for a category B wheelchair and want to obtain a higher category C wheelchair may access the $2,000 funding towards it. The Category D wheelchair grant is for clients who meet Category C eligibility and want a wheelchair that may not be on the program or they want to maintain ownership of the wheelchair. Wheelchairs purchased with a Category D grant must meet all of the equipment standards that any wheelchair funded on the program has to meet. This includes meeting resina standards, being on the North American market for at least a year, and having a manufacturer representative active in the province of Alberta. Clients accepting grant wheelchairs are responsible for all repairs for this chair and are not eligible for replacement for five years. Grant chairs are not eligible for a QFR process for five years. Here is an example of the approved product list for Category A wheelchairs and the catalog number for a Category A upgrade grant. If a client is eligible for a Category A but prefers a higher level category wheelchair, they would apply for a Category A upgrade grant. The first catalog number, W996, is for a Category A upgrade grant. These wheelchairs are considered client-owned. These grants are available once every five years without exceptions. Clients who take on ownership are expected to maintain and repair them. If a client is eligible for a Category B but prefers a higher category wheelchair, they would apply for a Category B upgrade grant under W997. Refer to the approved product lists online to determine which catalog number you would use for Category A, B, or D upgrade wheelchairs. Your assessment will determine which category the client is eligible for and which grant they can apply for. While clients of any age can obtain an adult wheelchair, only those who are under the age of 18 can obtain funding for a pediatric wheelchair. Pediatric clients who are eligible for the basic Category A wheelchair may require a Category B wheelchair in order to mount a speech-generating communication device. 
Children who require a wheelchair and a speech-generating communication device have complex needs and are seen in specialty seating clinics with a multidisciplinary team, including speech-language pathologists, occupational therapists, and physiotherapists who are AADL authorizers. The authorizers who work in these specialty clinics are considered competent in determining the type of wheelchair and mounting device or interfaces required required for speech generating communication devices. Prior approval from AADL is not required. However, the authorizer must document on the AADL eligibility summary for wheelchairs benefits form that the child has the speech generating communication device. Documentation will be covered later on in the module, including a review of the AADL eligibility summary form. There are eligibility requirements for some of the additional options or features on a wheelchair. For HD or extra wide wheelchairs on the program, there are size and weight requirements in order to be eligible. Remember that the client's weight must be stable for at least three months before authorizing a wheelchair. Angle adjustable foot plates are funded for clients who have foot or ankle deformities. The measurements and or description should be documented on the comprehensive seating assessment in case AADL audits the order. In order to authorize a rigid frame, the client must be self-propelling or have clear potential to self-propel in the case of pediatric clients. This information will be added to the AADL eligibility summary form to confirm eligibility. Once you have determined what your client requires and is eligible for, proceed with a trial. If for category A, tilt and heavy duty, you can proceed with completing the generic specification sheet to access a recycled chair first for trial. Once you have completed the full assessment and decided on the model, type, measurements, and options required for the wheelchair, you must complete the AADL eligibility summary for manual wheelchair benefits form. This form was developed by AADL to confirm eligibility for the category chosen, the model, the size, and the options. It helps the authorizer ensure that they are determining basic needs versus nice-to-have items. It does not replace the comprehensive seating assessment. Generally, the form is a tool that can be used by authorizers to check that they have not missed anything. There are six different eligibility summary forms to match the type of chair requested. These are available on the Alberta Blue Cross website. This form must be uploaded with the authorization when it is submitted on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. We'll now look at the wheelchair authorization process and the generic specification sheets. Once you have established the client is eligible for a wheelchair and have reviewed which category the client is eligible for, refer to the approved product list and review the models available under that category. Next, you should help your client trial the wheelchair to ensure it meets their needs appropriately. Access the recycle inventory first for category A, heavy duty, high weight, and tilt in space. For categories B, C, and D wheelchairs, proceed to the client's vendor of choice. Once you have established the final configuration and options needed by the client, if for category A, heavy duty, high weight, or tilt in space, you must complete the AADL generic specification form. A fillable version is available on the Alberta Blue Cross website. Once complete, submit the form to the recycle vendor, not to AADL or Alberta Blue Cross. The recycle vendor's contact information is on the top of the form. Include the first and second choice for make and model, dimensions, and any options. Also add any additional information or special requests in the comments. The recycle vendor will respond within two days if there is a match. If no match, proceed with the client's vendor of choice for the trial. 
the generic specification form does not have to be completed for category B, C, or D upgrade wheelchair grants. These wheelchairs are purchased new and are not provided through the recycle vendor unless under special circumstances. Here is an example of the generic specification form. It includes client information, preferred make and model, required dimensions, and options. To summarize the process for connecting a client with a wheelchair, for Category A, heavy duty, high weight, and tilt in space, the therapist will access the recycle vendor to search the recycle inventory for a match. The generic specifications form is completed based on the comprehensive assessment and submitted to the recycle vendor, not to AADL or Alberta Blue Cross. The recycle vendor's contact information is on the generic specification sheet. If there is a match in the recycle inventory, the recycle vendor will provide the client with the wheelchair and you can proceed to trial to ensure it meets the client's needs. If the client is happy with the chair, they may keep it. If there is no match, the therapist will receive written confirmation from the recycle vendor. The therapist then proceeds with the client's preferred vendor for a trial and order. After you have found an appropriate wheelchair in the recycle inventory, the next step is to submit an authorization for a recycle wheelchair through the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. A step-by-step -step guide and video tutorial on submitting authorizations can be found on the Alberta Blue Cross website. Make sure you upload the client declaration form and appropriate eligibility summary with the authorization. The recycle vendor will collect any cost share owing from the client and deliver the requested equipment. After the equipment is delivered, authorizers should assess the client with the equipment to ensure proper fit. If the chair does not work, return it and start the process over again. If, after starting the process over, you are unable to find a match in the recycle inventory, the recycle vendor will give the client a refund. You may then proceed to the client's vendor of choice for a new wheelchair to trial and order directly with the vendor. Here is a summary of the authorization process for equipment coming from the recycle inventory. The authorizer submits the generic specification form to the recycle vendor who searches the inventory and if a match is found, provides a cost estimate to the authorizer. The authorizer confirms these costs with the client and submits an authorization to the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. The recycle vendor collects any cost share owing from the client, refurbishes the equipment and delivers it to the clients. The authorizer then assesses the client in the equipment to ensure it meets the client's needs. If the client is happy, they may keep the chair. If the equipment is not right, the authorizer begins the process again. When ordering category B, C, or D wheelchairs, or when no match can be found in the recycle inventory for category A, heavy duty, or tilt wheelchairs, the client may choose a vendor to purchase a wheelchair from. When submitting the authorization, it will be simply for the category of chair, not the specific catalog number. In this case, an authorization is no longer an order like it would be when requesting a chair from the recycle inventory. Instead, it is confirmation that a client is eligible for this type of product and approved for funding. When submitting the authorization for a wheelchair, be sure to upload the client declaration and the appropriate eligibility summary form. For category A, heavy duty, high weight, and tilt in space, you must also upload all documentation from the recycle vendor showing that no equipment is available in the recycle inventory. This authorization will be provided to the vendor when ordering. Orders are now between the authorizer, client, and vendor. 
be aware that AAGL and Alberta Blue Cross will periodically audit authorizers and vendors to ensure compliance. Here are some key things to remember when helping your client order from their vendor of choice. Manufacturer specification forms are available on the manufacturer's websites. It is the authorizer's responsibility to ensure the specifications are completed properly, but the vendor can assist in this process. It is critical to work with the vendor to ensure the appropriate configuration is obtained. Provide the vendor with the authorization as well as the wheelchair specifications and all options, etc. This is what the vendor will use to order. Inform the client of all costs, including cost share and any upgrade costs. Advise your clients to be prepared to pay the client costs directly to the AADL wheelchair vendor as the vendor will not proceed with the order until this portion or a deposit is paid. The vendor can file a claim when the wheelchair has been delivered and accepted by the client. As authorizer or assessor, you must have all documentation on file. It is important that you understand how costs are determined so you can properly explain them to your client. The first step in determining client costs is to review the manufacturer's specification sheets for the wheelchair being authorized. Many manufacturers have a sheet specifically for AADL equipment. Next, refer to the AADL exclusion list for manual and power wheelchairs. Any option that is on the exclusion list is not covered by AADL. The client is responsible for these costs and the chair is considered a standard plus or upgrade wheelchair. A standard wheelchair is a wheelchair that has been funded by AADL. The only cost to the client is cost share unless they are exempt from having to pay cost share. To determine costs for standard plus or upgrade wheelchairs, you would calculate the client's cost share portion for those clients who are subject to cost share and then add upgrade costs. If the client pays some upgrade costs toward a wheelchair, but the amount is less than half the cost of the wheelchair, AADL maintains ownership and the wheelchair is called a standard plus wheelchair. When the client pays more for the wheelchair than AADL, the client is considered the owner and the wheelchair is called an upgrade wheelchair. AADL always maintains ownership of tilt and space wheelchairs and always pays more than 51% of the cost to maintain that ownership. Here are two examples. The first one is an example of a Category B Standard Plus wheelchair. AADL pays a maximum of $3,300 for a Category B wheelchair. If the model chosen is more than $3,300, the client pays the upgrade amount, in this case $292. If the client is cost share, they would also pay the cost share amount on the $3,300 up to $500. The total amount the client has to pay the vendor before they submit the order to the manufacturer will be $792. Only $292 would be counted towards ownership. In this case, AADL maintains ownership. The second example is another example of a standard plus wheelchair. The total cost of the wheelchair comes to $3,400. The cost of the upgrades is $900, which the client must pay, along with $500 if the client is cost share, for a total of $1,400. AADL paid $2,500, at least 51% of the cost, and therefore the wheelchair is AADL owned. The next example is an upgrade wheelchair. The total cost of the Category A wheelchair comes to $5,075. The cost of the upgrade over the maximum amount paid by AADL comes to $2,575. Total costs to the client are the upgrade cost of $2,575 plus the $500 cost share 
to a total of $3,075. The client paid more than AADL paid on this wheelchair and is therefore considered the owner. AADL pays $2,100 or 51% of the cost of a tilt and space wheelchair in order to maintain ownership. In the example here, AADL pays 51% of the total cost, leaving the client to pay the remaining $2,369 plus their cost share. Now that you are able to let your client know what they can expect for funding from AADL and what they will need to pay the vendor, you can complete the authorization form. We'll now look at manual wheelchair, internal transfers, repairs, maintenance, replacement, and returning. Internal transfers occur when a wheelchair that is no longer required by one client is transferred to another client in the same location or nearby. Internal recycling saves transportation costs and time. To internally recycle a wheelchair, the authorizer must still trial the wheelchair to ensure it meets the new client's needs. There are three steps to completing an internal transfer. First, complete the top part of the generic specification form. Check off internal transfer, add the serial number, fill in the make and model, and add the previous client's info in the comments section at the bottom or call the recycle vendor with the previous client's name, date of birth, and personal health number. Second, complete an authorization on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal for the client receiving the wheelchair for a recycle wheelchair. Third, submit the generic specification form and the authorization information to the recycle vendor. After the above steps are taken, the client's preferred vendor can complete the repairs and parts changes and claim any repair or parts change to the client receiving the wheelchair. Each client who has been provided an AADL-owned wheelchair are granted an annual repair allowance. Any costs above the maximum allowance is the client's responsibility. If a repair is required, the client must take their wheelchair to an AADL-approved wheelchair vendor. Any repairs over $500 are reviewed by AADL to determine if the wheelchair is cost-effective to repair. This will depend on the age of the wheelchair and the total cost for repair. AADL-approved wheelchair vendors must obtain permission from the client before performing repairs over the maximum paid by AADL. The client must be provided a copy of the work order from the vendor. Client-owned wheelchairs, those that have received some funding from AADL, should be kept in good repair by the client. These clients are responsible for their repairs and may be required to produce maintenance records when requesting a replacement wheelchair. Warranties apply to client-owned wheelchairs as well, and clients should be informed that if there are any issues within the 90-day period, they can return the wheelchair to the vendor. Authorizers do not need to be involved in the repair process. Authorizers should be familiar with quantity and frequency review processes. If you need a refresher, please review Module 1.7 online. Clients are eligible for funding for one manual wheelchair at a time. A duplicate wheelchair will not be provided for use in a different location, such as home versus school or work. The frequency that AADL will replace a wheelchair depends on a number of factors, including the age and condition of the current wheelchair, whether it is a grant with a limit of five years before replacement allowed, whether there is a change in client condition, and or the current wheelchair is worn and it is not cost effective to reconfigure or repair. A quantity and frequency review request must be completed when requesting funding for replacement wheelchairs within five years. A quantity and frequency review request does not have to be completed in the following situations. 
The wheelchair has been deemed not cost-effective to repair or reconfigure by AADL, has had normal wear and care, and is over five years old. Or, the wheelchair no longer meets the needs of the client, and the client has had the chair for more than five years. A wheelchair should not be replaced just because it is older than five years. It must be determined that it is no longer cost-effective to repair or it is no longer meeting the client's needs. When a client has had a change in condition and their current wheelchair no longer meets their needs, they may be authorized for a replacement wheelchair if all the following conditions are met under number one. These include an assessment has been done and the client has had a change of condition that cannot be met by their current wheelchair. Their current wheelchair cannot be reconfigured or is not cost effective to reconfigure in order to meet their new needs and they have not refused a wheelchair in the past. Clients who own their wheelchairs may only apply for replacement after five years and must meet all the criteria under number one. Clients must have used and maintained their current wheelchair in a reasonable manner to be considered for funding for a replacement wheelchair. When determining if the current wheelchair can be modified to meet the client's new needs, you may need to work with the vendor. For example, when the STF height has to be increased, longer forks and stems are often used rather than replace the whole wheelchair. Usually the fork will have two to three holes so the caster can be screwed in at different heights, which is a nice feature to avoid having to return a wheelchair. This chart outlines when you would submit a quantity and frequency review request to replace a wheelchair. When you consider replacing a wheelchair, the vendor should be involved to determine if the wheelchair is cost effective to modify, repair, or cannot be reconfigured. Basically, a QFR to replace a wheelchair would be considered when the client condition changes and when the wheelchair no longer meets the client's needs and cannot be reconfigured. If it is a size change, it must be at least a 2 inch difference in width or depth. As discussed on the previous slide, QFRs are not always required to replace a wheelchair. A QFR is not needed once the wheelchair gets older and is no longer economical to repair as confirmed by AADL or the chair is no longer meeting the client's needs and the client has had the chair for more than five years. Refer to the table in the Manual Wheelchair Policy and Procedures Manual for a breakdown on when to submit a QFR. This manual is available online on the AADL and Alberta Blue Cross websites. Replacing wheelchairs for clients who have previously refused a wheelchair is more difficult. They must wait at least six months before an authorizer can submit a QFR and the client or family must submit a letter explaining the circumstances around the refusal. The letter must be attached to the QFR before being submitted to AADL. If the client refuses the equipment a second time, they are no longer eligible for AADL funding. AADL owned wheelchairs must be returned to the recycle vendor when the client no longer needs it. The vendor may pick it up if the client is unable to drop the wheelchair off. Once back in the recycle pool, AADL may determine if it has not cost affected to refurbish it for another client and may choose to send it to surplus. Generally, wheelchairs over five years old are sent to surplus. If the client owns the wheelchair, they may donate it. They are not permitted to sell it for profit. We'll now look at vendor and authorizer qualifications. AADL wheelchair vendors provide repair services as well as providing new wheelchairs. They must meet certain standards and requirements that are set out in their contract with AADL. Each vendor employs trained technicians to repair wheelchairs. This module has focused on the processes to authorize a manual wheelchair through the AADL program. 
In order to assess and authorize manual wheelchairs, you must be an occupational therapist or physiotherapist who is an AADL authorizer. To be approved as a wheelchair authorizer, you must have increased knowledge in this area through extra courses and or seminars focused on wheelchair and seating assessments. It is important to be familiar with the equipment and seating you are authorizing as there are a number of options and features that require clinical rationale to obtain appropriate funding. Once you have met these extra requirements and have completed this module, you may apply to become a wheelchair authorizer for AADL by completing the application found online on the AADL website. Thank you for reviewing Module 2.6, Manual Wheelchair Benefits of the AADL Online Training. Please contact us if you have questions about the module content.